Aren't you staring at your screen as you watch this? Do you have multiple screens on at once? Meet a typical digital family. Meet the Screensters. As you can see, they're all very committed to their digital devices. While these devices are fun, heavy screen use is a recipe for digital eye strain. The Screensters know. Just look at their decor. If you have sore, irritated eyes, if your vision seems blurry, or if you have a pesky headache you can't shake, there's a good chance digital eye strain is to blame. Of course, the easiest cure is to minimize digital device use and stop staring at screens. Clearly, that's not going to happen. So what can we do? Follow a few simple tips and you can say goodbye to digital eye strain. Your eyes will thank you. Hello everyone. I'm Gayatri Prabhu. I'm an optometrist by profession. Today, we are making this video to create an awareness about the effect, uh, adverse effects of excessive screen use among children and adults. Many individuals experience eye discomfort or vision problems while viewing digital screens for extended periods of time. The longer the duration of screen use, the more is the discomfort that they experience. A complex of vision and eye related problems that result from prolonged use of computer screens, they are called as computer vision syndrome or your digital eye strain. In this digital era, and especially with the COVID-19 pandemic coming in there uh, and the imposed lockdowns, irrespective of the age group, everyone is hooked to various kinds of screens, be it your smartphone, be it your laptop, be it your e-readers, be it tablets. 80 to 90 percent of our waking hours, we are in front of some device or the other. All this excessive screen use is putting immense pressure on our visual system. This is especially true for young kids. The digital eye strain is emerging as a public health threat. Uh, the age group that is most vulnerable or is at more risk are the young children, unfortunately. Uh, the excessive screen use is putting immense pressure and immense strain on their uh, maturing visual systems. And uh, they are also unable to actually express the discomfort that they're exp experiencing. These kids are unable to express it and that is why their diagnosis also gets delayed. Unlike adults who can understand uh, the problems that they are experiencing and can uh, go in for a vision check or an eye examination. Now let's look at some of the common problems uh, or common symptoms that people who are experiencing digital eye strain complain of. The common complaints that uh, individuals with uh, digital eye strain experience are eye strain, wherein they feel that there is immense strain on their eyes. They, are, uh, they complain of blurred vision. They feel that initially when they start the day, they are able to work fine. But towards the evening, uh, their vision is getting blurry. They are unable to focus clearly. Or if they shift focus from the laptop or the screen to something uh, at a distance, then it takes a while for the vision to get cleared up. Uh, they complain of dry eyes related problems. They have burning sensation, irritation, watering, redness, etc. They have shoulder ache and backache related problems. Uh, they have uh, light sensitivity. They feel that there is uh, too much of uh, strain that is, uh, there is too much of light that is uh, affecting their uh, eyes. They also feel that towards the end of the day, the vision is getting uh, a, a little double. Uh, whatever they are seeing, they feel it is becoming a little double. They are not, uh, they need to squeeze or squint their eyes to see whatever uh, they are seeing comfortably. So these are some of the uh, common problems uh, that people complain of. All of them, all the individuals don't have all these problems. They may have one or two or a combination of these problems. So what do we do when we experience these uh, symptoms? The first and foremost thing is we need to go in to the nearest optometrist or an ophthalmologist and get our eyes com uh, a complete evaluation of our eyes done. So uh, after the complete evaluation based on whatever uh, is uh, the findings or whatever it is that is required for you, they will recommend if you if they find that there is a refractive error, be it myopia, uh, hyperopia, astigmatism, 
or in layman term what you call near sightedness or far sightedness they may, uh, they will recommend you spectacle glasses or contact lenses if you have eye coordination related problems of uh, eye teaming and eye focusing then uh, the optometrist uh, will uh, prescribe some vision therapy exercises some of them can be done at home some of them can be uh, need, you need to visit their clinic to get the exercises done uh, some of you may have problems related to dryness uh, the other thing that most eye practitioners uh, recommend is the 202020 rule so in this rule in the 202020 rule what we suggest or what we recommend is that after every 20 minutes of the screen use you need to take a break for 20 seconds by looking away from your screen at any object that is located about 20 feet from you so this is highly recommended for every individual who are has prolonged screen use irrespective of whether they have symptoms or whether they are asymptomatic or they are completely fine it is recommended that you take frequent breaks now as i mentioned if you have dry eye related problem you might be uh, advised to use tear substitutes or eye drops uh additionally you will be asked to blink more uh the uh, on an average uh, on a uh, for a normal person we usually uh, blink anywhere more than 15 blinks per minute but when it comes to uh, screen users we tend to stare at the monitor while we are working and so the blink rate comes down to say 3 4 or somewhere anywhere below 10 and that is one of the causes for dryness so that is why you are advised to blink more if there is any air conditioner air conditioning vent which is blowing air directly onto your eyes it's best if you can arrange or rearrange these vents uh, additionally it's always recommended that you use any kind of screen at a downward gaze angle wherein you're looking down on the screen by about 10 to 20 degrees uh, angle Uh, uh people are also recommended to increase their water intake stay well hydrated if you are a chain smoker or you smoke a lot reduce your smoke uh, smoking habit better quit it reduce the caffeine intake energy drinks your caffeinated drinks coffee tea try to reduce it this is especially true for people who work late nights um there are certain medications which might uh, cause dryness so uh, you might be advised to uh, visit your physician to alter the dosage of those medications uh, certain other recommendations that we generally give for screen users are the position at which you are using these screens so typically this is a position in which the individual is looking above at a higher level to view the screen so here the strain is there on the neck the there is definitely visual strain because at a higher angle you put in more strain to look at the characters and there is also a uh, strain on the shoulders and the back so the ideal position is you have uh, is where you're looking at the screen at a lower angle at a downward position which is about 8 to 9 uh, 4 to 9 inches below your eye level or 10 to uh, 20 degrees below your eye level additionally you need to give enough support for your neck and your back uh the other thing that is recommended is uh that uh, you use a good contrast while you're working on screen so the best possible uh, solution is to use black characters on white background i uh, see many times individuals uh, using their mobile phones on the battery saver mode with a black uh, background and white characters many of the low contrast option put Uh, immense strain on your eyes so it's recommended not to use uh, the low contrast uh, versions they might look good but they are not good for the eyes uh, you also need to do uh, keep the character size big enough so uh, if uh, for example uh, on a laptop if you are comfortably able to view a uh, font size 8 on times roman then you uh, for a comfortable viewing especially for a longer period of time you need to uh, use at least times roman uh, 16 14 for a better viewing experience for longer time 
The next problem is the glare issue because of excessive light that is there in the room, any bright window source which is putting up light onto the eyes. So those, uh, when this, uh, when that is the condition or the environment in which you're working uh, uh, for longer periods, that there's a lot of strain that your eye experiences, and uh, you by the end of the uh, day you are exhausted, you feel tired. This is the same when you're, you're working in a very dim room and uh, the, the screen brightness is on the highest uh, level. So uh, ideally, uh, if you're using your screen, uh, keep the screen brightness on the moderate side. Uh, make sure that the screen uh, illumination is neither too bright nor too dim with respect to the room in which you are working. The room again should have normal lighting, adequate lighting. It should neither be too dark nor too bright. Uh, the best thing is if there is any source of light which is causing the glare or if it's a window, try to cover the window. If it's a light, you switch off the lights. If you are unable to do any of it, try using a hood so that uh, the glare can be reduced and you are able to comfortably work. Additionally, if you are a spectacle user, uh, the optometrist will recommend that you have anti-reflection coating on the lenses so that the reflections which are coming in from the lenses uh, and that which cause glare can be taken care of. The next set of problems are that of your neck ache, back ache and the shoulder related uh, pains. These are mostly posture related problems because we don't maintain a good posture while working in front of the screen. So if you see this kid here, the kid is looking below at the screen and if even if they are doing say one hour of screen use in this position, the kid is going to have a neck pain. Uh, the individual here is comfortably uh, leaning and uh, working but there is a huge distance between their eyes and the screen. So with this distance and the font size remaining the same, there is extra pressure on their eyes. There is extra pressure on their hands and shoulders to type uh, in this at this distance. Uh, in the bottom pictures, this person, there is the person is going to develop backache problem because there is not enough support for the back. He's viewing at an angle where the screen is up which means they'll have end up getting neck pain in this position this all of us do uh, especially with the handheld devices we tend to go closer to the screens so as we uh, when we start uh, doing or working something on our mobiles or tablets we keep it at a, initially at 40 centimeters but as we keep uh, getting engrossed in the activity that we are doing, be it a Netflix movie or your WhatsApp chats, you keep getting your screen closer. This is especially true both with adults, but more so with uh, kids who do play video game on the mobiles. So uh, all this puts a lot of strain on your neck, back and shoulders. And uh, it is good if you can maintain an ideal posture wherein uh, uh, so that you have a better uh, experience uh, when you use screens for a longer period of time. So the ideal posture is wherein you give enough support for your back, enough support for your legs. Your legs are firmly placed on the floor. There is, uh, there is an armrest, so your arms, there is a, a support. Uh, you are viewing at a comfortable distance, say 50, one arm's length of 50 to 70 centimeter distance. Uh, you are viewing it at a downward angle. So all this is important for you to keep in mind when you're working on screens for a prolonged period of time. Again, if you need to type something by reading a material and then typing, make sure the reading material is also kept at a comfortable position. Uh, this uh, recommendation is also for kids, it's not only for adults, it's also for kids because kids are doing a lot of online classes these days and I see uh, kids lying down and taking their classes, they keeping their mobiles very close to their eyes, their tablets very close to their eyes and uh, attending their classes. So the ideal uh, thing for parents especially to note is that whatever device you're giving 
keep it fixed in one position and ensure that the kid is having at least an arm's distance between the screen that they're viewing and uh, where they're sitting. So that distance is maintained. Um, there are a lot of harmful effects of screen use on kids. Uh, the number one is the development of any kind of a refractive error, especially myopia. Uh, so, uh, on, in common terms, we call it nearsightedness. So, there is uh, an increased risk for kids to develop uh, myopia because of excessive screen use. This is especially uh, the kids whose parents are already myopic, they are more at risk of developing myopia. And kids who are already myopic, the progression of uh, the uh, increase in power will happen faster if they uh, work in front of screens for longer periods of time. Uh, that is uh, with problems related to vision. Now, there are a lot of other psychological impact that the kids are having. They There are more tantrums, there are more meltdowns, they are uh, being very rude and angry. Kids don't want to make new friends or they don't want to interact socially. They just want to keep playing their video games or keep watching the cartoon that they're doing or what they're watching. Uh, uh, ad adolescent ki uh, adolescents, uh, kids and uh, teenagers, they have a risk of developing anxiety issues, depression because of excessive social media usage. So all this uh, needs to be uh, uh, taken care by parents by reducing the amount of screen usage the kids are having. Excessive uh, screen use or in general screen use at night has a very uh, adverse impact on the quality and the quantity of our sleep. So evening screen time has uh, been shown uh, to signal the brain to remain active and thereby it reduces the quality and quantity of our sleep. So it is best if we can avoid screen time just before we go to sleep. So the ideal thing would be if uh, for kids after evening, it's best not to give any kind of screen time to the kids. Uh, if for teenagers and adults, uh, it is good if you can stop uh, any kind of screen use one to two hours before you go to sleep. Uh, the best way for this is to keep the digital devices away uh, from, uh, from the room in which you're sleeping or keep it on a silent mode. The next is... Uh, parents should have a good control and minimize the uh, uh, amount of screen time that the kids are having. Especially with the pandemic, the online schooling, uh, kids are already having too much of an exposure to the screens. So uh, additional activities like games and uh, um, cartoons or uh, TV viewing should be restricted and kept to bare minimum. Encourage kids to uh, do more of outdoor activities, encourage them to go out and play or you can even engage them in other uh, craft and art activities or any kind of indoor games, storybooks. If they are adults and teenagers, uh, adolescent uh, kids and teenagers, just engage them in some conversation and keep them occupied rather than uh, giving them uh, screen time. So the best strategy is to use everything in moderation. Uh, whenever you experience any kind of uh, eye strain or uh, uh, computer vision syndrome related symptoms, go for uh, an eye checkup, go for routine eye examinations. Uh, if whatever is recommended, follow those recommendations. If it is glasses, wear your glasses. If it is eye exercises, do those exercises. Maintain a good visual hygiene uh, in terms of the contrast, the illumination levels, by blinking more, uh, by staying hydrated, and more importantly, by taking frequent breaks. Again, the 2020 rule, I will just stress upon it. After every 20 uh, minutes of screen use, take a break for 20 seconds by looking away at any object which is 20 feet away. Finally, I would conclude with these uh, few pointers wherein 
Keep in mind when you are working on any screen device, the posture in which you are sitting and working and the distance at which you are using the device. The next important thing, the 20-20-20 rule. The next one is the screen brightness and the contrast level at which you are using the screen. Blink more. Make a conscious effort to blink more. There are many apps available these days uh, for people who are unable to uh, actually remember to blink. You can just keep that uh, uh, app on, on your mobile or your device, whichever screen device that you're using, and that will keep reminding you to blink. The next is stay well hydrated and it have get enough physical activity. My final uh, key take home message would be to maintain a good uh, visual hygiene, basically maintain a good uh, working posture and the working distance. The 20-20-20 rule, you adjust your screen brightness and the contrast levels. Blink more. If you're someone who forgets to blink, then uh, there are a lot of apps available wherein you can set the reminder and that will remind you to blink. Lastly, hydrate yourself get enough physical activity and stay healthy. So now the entire uh, video has been close to 20 minutes. So I think it is a good time for you to take a break and for 20 seconds by looking something which is 20 feet far away.